Hey, Ethan and Kat's running the camera today. Um, we're going to show you with three dogs. Hopefully, we'll have time to do this. Um, three dogs that have never worked on healing before. We're going to teach them from pulling and not understanding leash manners at all to walking on lead with this great little lead that we have here. Uh, we have these made by a company called Gunner Dog Gear. To start off with, we're going to take this normal slip style lead. Now this lead is made out of the uh, poly coated nylon material. So it's really that like leather feel material. It's really, really easy on your hands and really easy on the dog. Now, and gonna I'm going to come in closer and zoom in on Gunner here while we put this on so you can see exactly what we're talking about. So normally you would have a slip lead and you would just have it here and it chokes or it pinches um, or there's choke collars or there's other pinch collars, different types of collars to heal with. What we're going to use this is a little bit differently. Um, we're going to use it as basically what would be considered a makeshift halter in horses um, or sometimes it could be used this way. A slip lead. We're gonna make one twist underneath. Okay, keep your head up so we can show. One twist underneath, and then this part will go up over the dog's muzzle. And then we're going to cinch all of that down. So now we have two pressure points. We have a little bit of pressure over their muzzle, and we have pressure right behind their ears. Anytime he pulls, it applies pressure in both spots. This gives us complete control over the dog's head. Now, when we do this, it takes the dogs a little bit of time to get used to it. Um, you know, it's definitely different. And Gunner specifically, he's never done this before. So we're gonna see some of him maybe trying to paw at it to get it away or just not feeling comfortable. And then we're gonna hopefully work through here in a very short amount of time, Gunner's a pretty smart pup, and show you how we can go from pulling on the lead to walking nicely on the lead in a very short amount of time. So to start off with, we're going to start walking. We're going to apply light amount of pressure. You don't want to jerk on them or pull on them. We have, like I said, the two pressure points that pulling really hard is not going to feel comfortable. So really light pressure. Um, the key to this will be making sure that the pressure is upward, not backward. And then I'm um, just continuing to walk and basically allowing Gunner to self-correct. Now, when we have this where he's trying to get used to it, we're just going to pull up lightly until he stops. And then the pressure will come on. Good. Now we're going to start walking. Gunner, come on. Using really, really, really light pressure. We are encouraging Gunner if he lags behind. And if he gets ahead of us, which so far he's more distracted by the lead, um, he'll self-correct. And when we say self-correct, when he gets out in front, that's gonna put pressure on the lead and it's gonna pinch behind his ears and over his nose. So he is self-correcting himself when he gets out ahead. So here we're being encouraging Gunner. Turn here. Good. So Gunner's making this look way too easy. Promise he's never done this before. But that's what's so nice about using this slip style lead in a halter fashion is it makes healing and going on walks very easy. You can do it with one finger and you have complete control over that dog. So we basically have him to the point that Gunner is now comfortable with the lead. Um, he's able to walk and with very little to no pulling or tugging or pressure, um, he's walking by my side. now. All we are going to do to continue his training sessions is when we go for a healing session, flip this up over his muzzle and we'll make our walks around. And then through a conditioning process, not a forcing or breaking process, we're able to teach Gunner how to walk on lead loose wise. 
on and, loose leaves. And something that we'll be able to do as he becomes more proficient with healing and more conditioned to the healing behavior that we're looking for, we'll be able to take that slip lead and take it back off the top of his nose part. So it's just a slip lead behind his ears. And then you can make the small corrections just behind his ears. Uh, then if you're taking him for a walk and he would get into a high distraction situation again, you can just flip that back up over his muzzle if you need a little more control. You're coming up on meeting another dog. He just, uh, he just pulled that out of Ethan's hand and he just got it re readjusted. Uh, but if you're coming back up on a high distraction situation like another dog you're going to meet while you're walking, uh, or you know that there's a bunny that always runs across the path in this area, I would just put that up over his nose so you're prepared for him to be distracted and start pulling. Good. I'm going to go ahead and switch him for the next dog. Come on. And I saw your comment, Josh, about Willow needs this. Uh, did you know Gunner is actually Willow's sister or brother? So they're siblings. So we might be able to pull Willow out here too if we have time getting through these other couple dogs and... Uh, do a little video of her healing as well. You guys will have to let me know if you can hear Ethan well enough while he's talking during the live video since he's kind of far away. It's always hard to tell what you guys can hear or not. Otherwise, uh, if you can't hear him, just somebody let me know and then I can translate and basically talk for him. Okay, so here we have Cooper. Obviously, he doesn't have any leash manners. He does not have any leash manners. Oh, good. Thanks, Josh, that you can hear him good. All right. So, again, one good way to do this is to grab a hold of their flat collar behind them. Again, I'm going to get close up. Cooper's a black dog, and this is a black lead, so it may be a little bit more difficult to see exactly. But So we have a hold of the dog by their flat collar. We're going to make this loop big, one cross underneath, up over their muzzle. And then again, cinch it all down. Now we can do something where this uh, this part of the lead here uh, will spin or rotate inside this ring. When we make the one flip, we can go ahead and take that one wrinkle. You can see the wrinkle underneath here. We can take that wrinkle out, which makes it smooth now all the way around, which makes it a little more comfortable for the dog. And then we will again start the same way with Cooper. Just start walking, allow him to Make corrections. The thrashing, the fighting, the anything else, we're just going to pull up slightly until they settle down, and then we'll continue walking. Something important to keep in mind when you're starting this process is you want to go slow enough and not just try and rush into walking so that they get comfortable with the lead over their nose and behind their ears and not pawing at it because if you don't take the time to get them comfortable with that, and then they fight and thrash and paw and they get the lead off of themselves, then they're going to think, hey, this is how I can get out of it. I'll just fight some more. So it will just make the process take a little bit longer until they realize that they can't get out of it every time. So just taking your time and going slow, which is an important part of all dog training is not to rush through anything, uh, will help him in the long run understand that there's no getting out of this lead situation um, and he just needs to just needs to comply with what we're wanting. Oops, come on. So with Cooper, we have uh, had a little more jumping, a little more thrashing to begin with, but he's already to the understanding that if I just walk, um, that there's no little to no pressure. So we'll do a couple more loops and then we're going to switch to another dog. And uh, we are healing all of these dogs on the left, which is a very, very common uh, way to heal a dog, especially a hunting dog, because most people are right-handed and they will carry their firearm in their right hand and then have their left hand free to handle their dog instead of trying to heal the dog on the right and your firearms on the right, or then you're trying to carry your firearm in your non-dominant hand and uh, you're knocking your dog in the head with it and things like that. So people sometimes ask why we heal on the left and that is the reason why. So Ken Brandvold asked, when making corrections, does the lead go up into the eyes? No. And it doesn't. It just pinches across the bridge of their nose. And I'm going to try and zoom in while you pick up so that you can see that. 
Cooper's a little bit difficult to see on because he is a black dog. So if you can't see that, let me know. But you, it just pinches. Um, but nope, it, it doesn't put any squeezing into the eyes. There we go. Good. Yeah. Cooper. So a couple things to keep in mind when you're healing. If you make an outside turn this way, the dog has to walk faster to keep up with you. This is going to encourage them to get out ahead. If you have a dog that's pulling a lot, which most dogs are, some dogs that we try and heal, um, just try and lay there and say, well, drag me, I don't wanna walk, um, which we don't wanna do either. But if you have a dog that's, that's walking faster and is more in the pulling state, making inside turns allows you to use your body to more or less direct the dog's position. And it cuts them in the ability to kind of get ahead of you using your body that's a form of mild dominance or saying you know, you're moving out of my way to continue this healing process so with most dogs that are pullers making inside turns are a good idea the other thing to keep in mind when your dog starts to do well we want to make sure that we aren't um yeah you want to say sugar coating it for them or helping them through the process by okay let's go on a walk and we follow the dog they need you need to pick a direction you want to go and make sure that they're healing with you to that spot so so basically the dog is healing for you you're not healing with your dog and they're just leading the way and you're following along even though they're staying at your side and not pulling you're just following them around um, ken also asked the question about using a round lead or a flat lead we recommend using this flat style lead made by gunner dog gear um, it's also made out of that leather feel material because it stays in place really well. The round leads will tend to roll and rub and will actually cause more abrasion across the top of their nose um, and some wear marks. So this flat style lead really stays in place really well and doesn't slip and slide and, and cause, you know, basically rope burn. So Cooper is starting to, um, you know, be maybe a little more obstinate about the situation. He's kind of lagging behind. So I'm just being encouraging, um, making little noises, come on Cooper, or uh, snapping my finger, something to get his attention to pull him up with us. Be encouraging, don't just pull on them. The pulling stops them from coming forward, so we don't want to use that to drag them with us. Just be encouraging and show them that when you're walking, you don't feel pressure. When you get too far ahead, you feel pressure. Come on, Cooper, good boy. Come on. And I'll since this is Cooper's first time doing this type of healing again, uh, it is more difficult doing a lot of stopping and starting for him. And while Ethan's explaining things, stopping and starting and stopping and starting, he's having to really focus on what Ethan's asking. Following him, stopping when he stops, uh, and it gets very mentally exhausting on a dog. You can tell Cooper's tired. He hasn't done an exercise run today. We're just doing obedience with him right now. And he's tired. Um, it's not hot out. And he's just having to think and focus so much that it is tiring him out. So doing a healing session can be just as important as a long hour exercise run. Yep, absolutely. Um, one other thing with Cooper here, he has an understanding. Don't pull, don't freak out, don't act like a, like a jerk on the lead. Um, behave yourself. And that's where we're going to typically end the first session. We don't want to completely exhaust him. He's going to be done. The next session, again, will start just like it is. And he has the ability to um, walk without pulling my arm off. That's the old thing. I mean, that used to be our method. It was, we'll just tug on the dog until they stop pulling. Well, I'd get done healing and my arm would just be worn out. It's like, come in. Hey, cat, how's it going today? Oh, you must have healed 20 dogs today. Your arm's falling off. So we don't want to do that. We had to find an easier way. This is definitely it. So this will be a good end of the first session. He's not pulling me. He's walking on a lead. He's maybe just a little bit hesitant about staying with me, but he's made a really big grounds here to start off with, especially from the beginning, pulling me around to this. So we're going to switch him for the next dog. We had another question from Tyler. What age do you start this type of healing? And we really recommend letting a dog get some field work in first 
so that they are comfortable leaving your side to go out and hunt a field really well. Uh, some healing, if you just drive home that healing and obedience at too young of an age, uh, that a puppy's never had the experience and time to go out and hunt a field, you're gonna go to the field and then that dog is going to be sticky and they're not going to want to leave your side because all you've done is drive home the obedience with them since they were, you know, eight weeks old. So we don't recommend starting puppy healing um, until you've got a good field work established with that dog where they're comfortable leaving you and being independent. Uh, this is Bo. He is a little bit older than the other two, a little bit bigger, uh, and definitely is pulling, 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 which I hear all the time, and not only from ladies, but uh, they hate taking their dogs for walks because it's just a battle, and it's exhausting, and it's no fun, and it's not enjoyable. And going for a walk with your dog in the evening, especially if you live in town and don't have the access to just let them out the backyard and run, uh, should be enjoyable and not a pain in the butt. So teaching your dog to heal this way will help with that. Uh, and your arm won't be tired and exhausted like what Ethan was saying. And you won't dread having to take your dog on this walk. Now, Bo, I'd expect a little bit different response than we got out of the other two dogs. He's a little bolder, a little more confident, a little older, and more set in his anti-healing ways. So. I expect a little bit more fighting, so we're going to allow him to settle in first. Um, getting comfortable just with the lead around his muzzle. Which, like we mentioned before, don't rush into just trying to heal him. He needs to feel comfortable with the lead over his nose and muzzle first. Uh, and not just try and rush him into healing, because if he's fighting and thrashing like that, when you start the healing process, it's a lot easier for him to get that off over his face. And then with his personality, he'll think that, hey, I got out of it once, I just have to fight harder and I'll get out of it again. Uh, which is why we wanted to show you this process with a couple different dogs that each are a little different age and a little different personality. Um, they were all boys, but uh, I think if we have a second, we'll pull Willow out, which is Gunner's sister, and show you um, how she's going to heal because she hasn't done this either. So you can st still see him pawing at his muzzle a little bit. Every time he does that, Ethan's going to slow down, kind of stop, make sure he doesn't have the opportunity to get that off over his face. So we're already seeing a drastic improvement on Bo's healing. I mean, he's not fighting as bad. He's staying by, by his side, uh, by Ethan's side better. This is 100% the first time that he's ever done this. Um, you can see also um, two things. First of all, I'm making all inside turns with Bo because he's definitely a bold, confident dog. We want to push him out of our way using mild dominance to help him to understand he needs to pay attention to our position in this healing game. Speaking of position, Tyler Brown asked a question, where do we like the dogs to heal? Along the body, ear to human leg usually keeping their shoulder about even with our leg. That gives them the ability to have their head. Um, I'll try and get, I was gonna say, I'll get a usually side right shot. Here. This allows their head to be able to check for our position. Um, as we complete this with, uh, and we move into a um, more of an off lead healing situation, I want the dog to be able to see where I'm at and I don't want them to be behind me where they can try and go back and forth sides. And I don't want them to be ahead of me where if I go this way, they can't see that I'm going that way. So it's basically allowing their neck and head to be in front so that they can keep an eye on our position. Another question, do we verbalize the word heal when you are walking with the dog? We do not constantly say heal, 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 heal as the dog is healing because that word will start to mean nothing. It'll just be white noise to that dog. When we're starting a behavior, we say heal. If we stop while we're healing and he sits by your side waiting or stands by your side and we begin again, we can give him the cue heal. Uh, but in all honesty, it is somewhat unnecessary. The dog has a lead around their neck. 
they are in a healing position and when we're teaching this behavior it's more the dog understands that when i'm in this position this is what i do it's a conditioned i just heal when we're walking like this um the other side of it is when we are conditioning a new behavior with a dog we don't introduce a cue like heal um, in this case until the dog shows an understanding of what we're asking so we try and develop a behavior before we apply a word to it or a cue to it um, this again like we explained we try and condition behaviors this allows us to have full control over the dog and condition the behavior of walking by our side once we get to the point where we're starting to take this off their muzzle uh, and then move into full off lead healing where we use a collar for um, a collar for the correction instead of the lead um, then we would really start to make sure that they have a full understanding of the cue so that we can say heal and then if they aren't healing we're using the collar to correct the situation but Bo has just about got this figured out very 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 light touch we don't need to be jerking on him just very light pressure slows him down keeps him by our side which the light tugs don't take very much strength you you know you don't think that you have to be strong to be able to do this uh it's one or two fingers and tugging up is all the pressure that you really need to put on the dog and that's why this way of healing with this style of lead is so nice you don't exhaust your arm making the corrections either i'm gonna switch for willow quick does anybody have any other questions while ethan switches out Bo for Willow. We got this beautiful landscape here in Kansas. Okay. Here comes thing. Willow. <laughs> Hello, Willow. One other thing that we didn't mention to make sure is when you're putting this lead on. And I'll come close. Willow is also black, so this will be really easy to see, I'm sure. The slip part needs to slip off the outside. Stop, baby. Slipping off the outside of the dog's neck. Stand in front. Okay. So if you're going to heal on the left like we do, it needs to slip off of the left. So the part that's attached to the ring is on the inside. Otherwise, if you have it the other way and you have the dog on our left here and we have the, it's slipping off the inside, what happens when we tug is it binds and the dogs don't get full relief when they're doing it right. So confusion, that adds confusion. We need to make sure that when we slip off the outside, it's really easy for it to relax and loosen up and not continue to add pressure. Yeah, it releases that pressure and doesn't bind up when you're healing on the left. Uh, you Again, want this set up this direction. Flip up over the dog's muzzle and then we'll run that one twist out so that everything is smooth on her. Yep. Keeping and, the ring, sorry, huh? Oh, I was just gonna say, and if you happen to be left-handed and you do all of your training yourself and you decide that you'd rather heal the dog on your right, you Perfect. still just want the ring next to your leg. Yep. So slipping off the outside. Yep. So I'll back up so that we can see Willow here. And allow Willow to get adjusted here with the collar. She's not doing a lot of pawing or scratching. Um, we'll start walking. So uh, Ken asked what type of lead is that again? It is a slip style lead made by Gunner Dog Gear. We do sell them. Uh, so if you are interested, design this. they're kind of custom. I mean, a slip style lead that's round, like we talked about, can a lot of times cause abrasion and rope burn across the dog's nose because it just has too much movement. Um, and then we had another question. of, And in two passes, we're pretty much done with Willow's first session. Now you can spend 10, 15, 20 minutes on this, um, or if you want to go for a long walk, that's not a problem. Anytime she pulls, 
picking up if she tries to fight or thrash. And then anytime she's out ahead, just really light touch. And if she gets behind, just be encouraging. But she's doing really well. She's happy to do this. Uh, another question was, do I need a lead like you are using? They've been using a flat collar and like a clip style leash. And you don't need one like this. But if you want to heal this way and make it simple, yes. Uh, the problem with the flat style collar, like she has that green one, and you put a clip lead on there, when she's pulling, that flat collar comes down. This would be the equivalent here. We're just gonna slip oh, this sorry. around. Sorry, I was not, I was watching what you were doing, but not on the screen, so I wasn't exactly showing. So we're clipped to her flat collar. Now, come on. When she gets out ahead of us, it really pulls and that collar sits down on her shoulders where she has the most power. Yep, yep. That's where sled dogs are harnessed because yep. they can pull, pull, pull. Yep. So when you have a slip style lead, it keeps that up over the smallest point of their neck, um, which is where they have the least power. That's why we really like the style lead with the slip collar because otherwise this is what she reverts to. Uh, and this is essentially demonstrating what a clip style lead would be. Uh, with the flat collar. So, and it just takes a lot more strength. It wears you out, tires you down, and takes a lot longer to get to the same point. Again, we'll go up over muzzle. We'll take any of these twists out. Right back to. And you can see the huge difference again going from the clip style that we simulated by slipping the collar through her flat collar uh, to back around her head. She's already not pulling as much. Um, and this is just with doing a few minutes of a healing session with her. I'm gonna grab one more dog. <laughs> He's gonna grab one more dog. I don't know which dog. This is gonna be a surprise for all of us. So when we get done with the live video, I'll post um, in the description again, the type of lead that we use. And then I honestly don't know if they have a website where you can order. I would have to check that out, uh, but definitely you can order from us and we can get one shipped out to you. If you are interested in this slip style lead, uh, it's leather feel. You are welcome, Josh. She's been fun to work with. Unfortunately, we can't bring every dog that's in uh, training through this just because uh, we would never end the video. So, oh, who is this? Surprise, it's Shooter. So just to demonstrate the finishing process, you have a dog that's healing. So we've got the, the muzzle lead on here. We start walking. So Shooter hasn't had one of these slip style leads on for a while, so he might need a second to get used to it uh, again as well. But he is to the point where he heals off lead using the correction with the collar. And so what Ethan's going to show is the transition between uh, the slip style lead over the nose to just behind the ears and then to the collar. And they have a really good understanding of through conditioning, walking at heel. Then we can start walking loose lead with really minor just tugs again. Um, they've learned to respond to very light pressure, which is what we want. Um, and then we're going to actually overlay the collar. So every time we tug, we're going to use the nick or momentary button on our e-collar, finding the level that re the dog responds to well. So it would be nick, nick, stay where you're at, good. Nick. Anytime we have to change directions, good. And then you can go to full off lead healing where you make the correction just with the collar. Nick, good. Come on. Now, this is not something that's all going to happen in one session. Just showing you the progression uh, with the dog that is finished to completely collar conditioned to healing off lead. Uh, it's not something that you're going to put your slip style lead on your dog in a halter style and then by the end of that session be healing off lead. Uh, that would be way too much for a dog to 
to mentally comprehend in one session. But this is, you know, the ultimate finished product that would be very enjoyable to take for a walk. Absolutely. Any questions, please feel free to keep throwing them in there in the comments. We'll get to them. We'll answer them for you guys. And if you are interested in a lead, you want to try this yourself, uh, hit us up. We can get you one out. Thanks. Thanks, guys.